What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. Ah, uh, the other host of Popcorn Culture. Well... As I am widely known across the internet. I'm pretty sure you're the specialist guest. If you were to look it up on the old Wikipedia, I'm pretty sure it would say the other host. Do we have a Wikipedia page? I don't think we do, but don't, it feels like we should. Don't get me excited over something like that. It, it's not true. It would surprise me if Popcorn Culture had a Wikipedia page because I don't think Super Carlin Brothers has a Wikipedia page. True, true. Yeah. Although I did Google us yeah. uh, yesterday, possibly yeah. this morning, and one of the top questions that came up, like with like a little drop down thing, yeah. which I thought was kind of cool that we have like our own little drop down thing. We have a drop down? We have a little drop down oh. thing. It said, are Jay and Ben Carlin actually brothers? <laughs> oh, the mystery shall be revealed right now. Yes. Yes. We, we, are, we, we, we have talked brothers. at length about our childhood Yes, yeah. <laughs> Not only do we have the same last name, but we were next door neighbors and best friends. <laughs> <laughs> it was a weird coincidence. Who knew? Oh my gosh. No, let me tell Okay, speaking of Wikipedia, speaking of the Wikipedia, one, I would love it if there was a Super Carlin Brothers page, but I don't feel like it's a thing you're supposed to create for yourself. Yeah, I think we've talked yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if we did. I feel like this was maybe in an after the final pop that got corrupted. Oh, you could be correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I've anyway. heard you say these words before. Oh, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Well... Let me tell you, every time, whenever I'm on Wikipedia, so one of the one of the searches I've done before is for our um, local high school. Yes. Where we went. Where we went. Cave yep. Spring High School. Yeah, in Roanoke, in, Virginia. In Roanoke County, currently under construction. And the curious thing about a high school page is that it will list notable graduates. Yes, it will. Yes. And I'm kind of like, you look at it, and there's only like seven or eight or something on there, and they are all professional athletes. Oh, who have come which, from the school. Which, we, I, I mean, maybe we have... There are many professional athletes yeah. like in the percentile of all people who play sports. Mm -hmm. It's it's like less than 1%. Yeah. But I, I have frequently felt like our high school has yielded an unexpected number of professional athletes. For sure. I mean, we had Tiki and Rondé Barber. Yep. So played 40. for the New York Giants and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Right. Uh, and they were twins. They were twins. Super cool. Yeah. Uh, JJ Reddick. Yeah, who, who was like the the talk of college basketball for like four years at Duke. Yep. Crazy. Yep. Who else do we have? Oh, uh, someone in your graduating someone, class someone played for the New England Patriots. For, for the New England Patriots, and I think won a Super Bowl. He was just the long snapper. But no, but, no, no but. sorry. The, so I say just the long snapper, as if if there's a position that has one job that if they mess it up, it is catastrophic. It yes. is often the difference. But like, it's all you gotta do is hike the ball nice and long. You mess up a long snap, that very likely will lose you the entire game. Right. Yeah. And I don't know if a long snapper is who snaps for field goals, but field goals have been important to the New England Patriots' success. <gasps> yes. I don't think it is the same person. It's not the same one? I don't okay. think so. Also, it feels like as far as being a professional football player is concerned, the long snapper is like a relatively low rep, like, you know, sure. like position, position to play, yeah. which is kind of nice. You get yeah. to play professional football right. and only have to go out like maybe 10 yeah, like, plays the whole time. Like special teams. If yeah. you're on a good team like the Patriots, you're probably not even punting that often. <laughs> How amazing. And that you have a Super Bowl ring. <laughs> right. The point what is. Great, what a great gig. The point is he has a Super Bowl ring and has the accolade arguably more important of being on Cave Spring High School's notable graduates list. That's true. That's true. And I would just like to say that we've got, you know, like a gold subscriber button. You know, like I'm not I would never suggest that the, the little colonels go and like, you know, adjust the Cave Spring High School Wikipedia page to include other notable graduates who are like YouTubers or anything. But, <laughs> you know, I would never encourage such a thing. Such no, vandalism. Of course not. No. Of course not. But it feels like if our names showed up on there, whoever is like the next level up on Wikipedia, I feel like it'd be, they'd be hard pressed to like delete our names. To disagree with it. To disagree with it. It's like this is not not it's remarkable. Exactly. Not 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 true. <laughs> I love it. I so love it. I'm just, you know, I've, I, it would make, it would bring me joy if I checked the Cave Spring High School Wikipedia page and, you know, there was an update. Is this something that you, do you check, like, have you checked a couple of times before being like, I wonder if it's happened yet? No, I, I, I no, uh, no, it is not something I've checked before. And it wasn't even something I knew I wanted until I was just like curiously Googling, like, what comes up if you search for our high schools? Like, is it listed on Wikipedia? Oh, it is. Notable graduates. Interesting. Interesting. So that's, that's really about the extent of it. I will say <laughs> we made a joke in one of our J vs. Ben's recently. Yes. Where 
I think the question was, who sings Make a Man Out of You in Mulan? Yes. Yeah. And you put you you could not recall the correct answer of Donny Osmond. Yes. So you wrote down Donny Basketballs as a joke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And it has been the funniest thing. Like every couple of days, someone will tweet me a picture of Donny Osmond's Wikipedia page where they have gone in and changed his name to Donny Basketballs. No, they have not. They have. It is. I did not know this. You did not know this? No. Oh my God, dude. It is hilarious. They've, I mean, it gets cleaned up pretty quickly because he's, you know, obviously a very, very well-known person. Um, <laughs> but apparently not yeah. to me inside of that moment. <laughs> Even though he's you. literally tweeted me about that song before. Yeah. Wow. Oh, embarrassing but it is embarrassing this is the problem with my memory oh. it is not good but yeah like people will do it they'll like obviously like control f just osmond and replace it with basketballs so it'll be like basketballs got his start when he's <laughs> <laughs> as a member of the osmond family <laughs> oh my gosh yeah yeah oh my gosh so shout out to you donnie basketballs donnie I love basketballs your, you you have sung my favorite disney song of all time we need to if when eventually we create like a uh a story like an animated series of some type uh, yeah but i need to throw that on the pile of things we should do eventually make an animated series make an animated series mm-hmm. with a character named donnie oh, basketballs donnie basketballs will certainly be like a deep cut easter egg voiced by donnie Osmond. of course <laughs> It'll come for a circle. <laughs> It'll come for a, yeah, it. we're there. We're there. There it is. Yeah. There it is. We Can we become part of Donny Osmond lore? <laughs> It would be honestly such a. I, I would. I would put it right up there with Super Bowl ring, mm. Cave Spring High School Wikipedia page, being part of Donny Osmond lore. There you go. <laughs> All pretty much equal accomplishments in everybody eye, everybody's eyes. Okay, but here's the thing though. Yeah. Being a contributing member to actual lore of one of your favorite fandoms. Yeah. Like, what could be better? Oh, like, it's, it is a dream. Yeah, it doesn't have to be Donny Osmond lore. It doesn't, if no. We it, could, in fact, it could be Harry Potter or Marvel right. mm-hmm. or Disney animation. Right. Pixar. Pixar. This is one of, yeah, that's like one of those Pixar Easter eggs where I've wondered before and I don't think we're there yet. We don't have the kind of notoriety, but like if we ever really had like an explosive something where mm-hmm. it was like we've contributed to the Pixar community and then we get to be like just ongoing Easter eggs from then on and oh. everyone knows it's like such a meta joke that the people who do Pixar Easter eggs are Art now is- a Pixar it's Easter a- egg. Oh, that would be... One day. One day. It could work. Pixar. Someone. Some, someone from Pixar must be listening. Look, maybe. If, if you if you work at Pixar and or you know someone who works at the Pixar and you want to hook us up with the, like the slightest Easter egg in, you know, some uh, like Soul. Soul's coming up soon. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be down. I would fly myself out there specifically to, yeah. Yeah. to, record, to record a it. single sound bite. Right. Just like two dudes in the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, like, yeah. Oh, maybe they're like, maybe they're like buying eggs or something, you know? Why would we be buying? Oh, because it's e- an Easter, Easter egg. egg. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, I didn't get there is. fast enough. Wow. Man, um, I need to work on my brain. Sorry, Ben. That's okay. So, okay. Okay. Um, let's, let's switch gears because we're dangerously close to forgetting the corny joke again. Oh, we <gasps> can't do that. We can't, can't do not. that. There's honestly the kind of guilt that I feel like I go home at night and when we forget the corny joke yeah. and I'll like, I'll lie there in bed staring at the ceiling fan being like, I can't believe we didn't do it. I can't believe it. So Jay, let me ask you, why are frogs so happy? Oh, I feel like this is like a croaking. Uh, uh, why are frogs there? Lily, I don't know. <laughs> so, so many, so many good frog thoughts. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Lily pads. Because they're so hoppy. Kuroge. That actually is not oh, bad. Okay. That's not bad at all. They eat whatever bugs them. Oh. Oh. Mm, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. good. Pretty good. All right. All right. Oh, which nice. I, have you ever eaten frog legs before? I, boy, I I want to say I have, but it's not like an important memory. It wasn't. It doesn't like stick out to me. Yeah. So mine does a little bit um, <laughs> because it was just it was one time and I was at a food truck and it was the type of thing where I was like, oh, they're known for the frog <clears throat> legs, and I was like, okay, I'm in. Like, yeah. There's there is nothing that will make me eat more ambitious food than a food truck because there's something about it where it's like this is gonna be fun no matter what because like if you're a food truck you have a very limited menu yes so what you put on the menu as if from the outside you feel like they they only make like four things and 
They're relying, their income, their livelihood is based on these four things. Right. All four things must be, um, must be their best four things. Yes, they must be. Like, must yeah, be. you have to be able to execute on all fronts. Yeah. And so I ordered them and I feel like my, my unreasonable fear of frog legs for most of my life is that for some reason they would be like slippery. <laughs> I'm going to drop it. Like, yeah, like almost like in the same way that, that it would be like if I tried to just like grab a frog. Yeah. Which actually, I'm going to let me sidetrack for a second. Okay. There was this one time <laughs> that we were at Smith Mountain Lake as kids and we were camping. And I don't know if you remember this story or not, but I was like waiting around. They had like a, like a little roped in uh, beach swimming area where you could just like hang about. Mm. And I remember I was sort of off on my own when I see a fish in the water and I like walk up to it. And this is like one of those moments in life where it's like, this will never work. It's almost like trying to like smack a fly. Yeah. Like unless you're a frog, you're not hitting it. Yeah. See what I did there? I, I, worked, uh, yeah. I worked it. Yeah. Worked it back um, around. So anyway, I'm like going bare grills on this fish, like right. walking up behind well, it. I got you, fish. I'm, I'm probably like seven and I'm like walking up and I've got like both hands like out in front of me, like ready to like clench. Like I've got this. I've got this. And I plunge my hands into the water and grab the fish. No. Swear to you. Swear to you. I'm pretty sure that the fish had already been caught that day and was maybe not doing well. Oh, I see. Um, that wasn't really clear to me at the time. And I remember I grabbed the fish and then like run up the like the beach to show dad i'm like i just caught this with my hands <laughs> that is amazing i know that i know amazing. that's exactly what i said and dad was like let's go put it back in the water hey, and like, okay but so, from now on i will be known as <laughs> fish hands carlin fish hands carlin yeah i needed a trend of one time ever for this to be an absolute fact of of my personality and characteristics like i can catch fish with my hands that's me no no more rod and reel for me you say go fishing i'll be like cool i got my all i need right here uh, it's called my hand my hand yeah and that's the thing is that i feel like i if i were to then go and I, this may have even happened on like a field trip with my like fellow classmates where we were going to yeah. go fishing mm -hmm. i would probably be like oh yeah i don't use a fishing pole i can catch a fish with my hands like i i probably would have bragged about this this. Yeah. And it would have been this thing where people would be like, do it, do it. Yeah. And it like all of a sudden then you'd be like in that position yeah. of like your bluff being called out and it would it would become this total thing. I like, mean it wouldn't it wouldn't be that you were bluffing. It would probably just be hard to do again. It would just be hard to do again. <laughs> like, hard to, right. It's hard to notice a fish big enough to be able to grab in shallow water. True, true. Yeah. But that being said, this is only tangentially related. I promise I'll get back to frog legs. Okay. So I was at physics camp one year, right? As one does. As one does. Yes. Physics camp. We learned about Have mercury. Have I mentioned how cool you were as <laughs> yeah. a kid? <laughs> Very cool. We got to play with like liquid nitrogen and like freeze a rose and drop it on the ground. But and it does shattered. sound cool. It was it was it very cool. cool. Yeah, we got yeah. to got to got to mess with things. We went, yeah, there were some weird camps. I went to like I went to like um like uh, vide videography camp. I don't know. It was like it was like you did like was it like claymation? Didn't you do like stop motion? Oh, that something? was that was a different camp. There was one where, yeah, we made like little claymation videos like in the 90s. Like, yeah, it came out pretty good. If it, I recall, it did. This was yeah, I went to one where it was like you were just making videos. You were just like, kind of like learning about video cameras and like how to I mean, I say how to edit did not there. Were, you did not do any of that. That I was see, like I see. very much you took it to the teacher and they'd be like, mm, but, but I don't know. Anyway, go on with your story. Physics camp. Yeah. Well, point is, we've gone to some cool camps in life. Mm. But so I'm at physics camp and one of the Fridays they took you to the the dam because we were going to be learning about like hydroelectric power and mm -hmm. stuff and after you left the dam and like did your whole tour there they brought you down to this like little i don't even know what it would be like it's it's an area where they sold materials that you might use for boating on the lake and stuff but they also had like a little like popcorn machine where you could get like a cup of popcorn that you could feed to the carp okay that like manifested you would throw like the the yeah. popcorn in and they would just be everywhere right like, they're like accustomed to this they're very accustomed to it it's it's like yeah like a like a it is part of the the, to the tourist experience and there was this girl that was with me who had been like you know like my camp girlfriend you know when oh, i was like, okay yeah. yeah when i was like 11 or something mm, and at physics camp at physics camp <laughs> um actually this was this was a girl that i feel like there were moments in my life where i would meet people and i would be like was it you like you don't even remember i don't remember like whatever happened to this girl and there were so many times in my life where i thought that i had like refound her uh -huh. and then she just like disappeared into the ether oh slash gosh. different part of virginia from me interesting i know super bizarre you don't like know her name 
I don't know her name. Wow. I don't know why I can't remember it. Wow. This It's like, it may be because of what happens next. So <laughs> we're there, you know, like playing, watching the carp and stuff like that, feeding yeah. them all. And this girl is like standing next to me and she like, I don't know, she like turned sideways really rapidly, literally tripped on one of those like cleats that's on the, on the edge of the deck, like that you would like tie a boat to. Yeah. She fell into the carp. Oh no. Like with all the fish. Oh. Oh my gosh. So, so it was just like this complete mortifying experience where I was like, oh, oh my, oh my God. Was that my, did I do? Did you like, knock a girl into carp? I didn't. No. Not at all. She okay. completely tripped on her own, but it was like a completely mortifying experience. Oh man. I would, I imagine. I mean, like we're talking like hundreds of carp. Right. So many carp that like, it would seem like you could walk across them. Right. Like they, they are, they are clustered so close together. There is no water between them. Yes. Right. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. So it was, it was such, such a bizarre thing, but that was always like, whenever I met someone who I thought I was like suspicious that it could be this girl. Right. It was like, you never fell into a, the into lake. A, into a pool of <laughs> With a bunch of carp, did you? <laughs> which, which is like. This is how you'll find her. I know, I know. Like, I, oh man. And if that person is listening. Oh man. Wouldn't that be the. That would be amazing. Most remarkable thing. I need, if someone knows a family member that ever fell into a huge pile of carp. Yeah. I, I need at to know. Camp. At, at physics camp. I need to know who this person is. Yeah. Because yeah, they just like, they just almost, like. Almost guaranteed they live in a landlocked state now, right? <laughs> 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 like any water nearby? No thanks. No thanks. No thanks. I had a bad experience. <laughs> I had a bad experience. I live in the middle of the desert. <laughs> right. I'm where I'm safe from yeah. all carp. Right. I also no longer eat popcorn. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Which so they're probably not listening which, to popcorn yes, culture. Yes, I was going to say it makes it that much <laughs> less likely that they're listening to this particular episode. You can you can bet they're on uh, Team Jazzy J. You can bet. You can bet for sure. <laughs> maybe it, it wasn't my fault. Well, it feels maybe. like you think it was my fault. I, but you're the. It sounds like you think you're guilty. I just don't understand what happened. I don't. Even, I don't understand why I can't remember more about this. It was like it, it, like I remember her falling in, and I don't know if maybe that's what happened. Is mm-hmm. that like the chapter in my brain that like is able to remember this period of time yeah. was so filled by the memory of her falling in yeah. that I just can't remember anything else. So so you've met other people and asked them specifically though about the carp. Yeah. So I you, have. is it possible they've completely blocked it out themselves? And like, been like they're just like maybe you have met them and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like uh what a strange thing to happen it, to a wow, person. That sounds terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Like they just walled it up. They completely. just walled it up. They're like, I don't remember. There is no carp in Bossing say, you know. I would be so upset <laughs> if I had met the person and they just didn't. Well, they, I wouldn't be upset. Yeah. But. Why would you be upset, man? Because it's your fault? <laughs> no. <laughs> because why? Oh, it would make me feel bad if I was upset with them because they had blocked off a traumatic experience, which was falling into a pool of carp. And you're sitting there reminding them. <laughs> I'm bringing up terrible memories. Yeah. Oh, man. So anyway, that was physics camp. And long story short, if you're out there, please let me know. Would love to uh, would love to recap this and, and see if you remember it the way that I do, because who knows? Maybe this is something where I've just like changed my memory of it. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, maybe I fell in with the carp. <laughs> you fell in. <laughs> ben, you never went to physics camp. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man. There was a physics camp, but it hasn't been around for 10 years. For, for ten, 10 years would be plenty of time for me to have gone. <laughs> but anyway, long story short, the frog legs that I got from the food truck <laughs> were completely slippery. They were. Yes, oh, I was no. so disappointed. They were fried. And so like, you, you know, I went to pick them up and it was like the, 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 the batter did not in any way, shape or form stick to the meat of oh, the frog leg. Oh, no. And so it was, I like picked it up and it all just fell apart in my hands and it was completely slippery exactly as I feared it would be. <laughs> and so I, I'm not going to say that I swore off frog legs, but yeah. I would love to be proved wrong that I can that I can mm. enjoy them. I feel like maybe I can I can only imagine what it feels like. We used to have a restaurant here that sold like fried like I think it was gator tail. Fried gator tail. Yeah. Yeah, and it 
It was quite good, but it too had like a, I don't know, slippery consistency, even when the breading stuck to the frying. Right. This is the thing that I think, and this is, I would even say it's my own personal experience, and I'm sure plenty of people will message me with tips, but I feel like almost anything that I've ever fried in my own life, the breading had not adhered well mm. to the to the, the interior. Did you, did you have a wet step and then a dry step? Typically, yeah. 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 Like, you know, oh, some type of like dredging was yeah. going uh, right. on. Right. Yes. That's yes. the appropriate word. Uh, yes. Wet hand, dry hand. <laughs> Wet hand, dry hand. Yeah. And then almost always my fingers are so covered in like, I, I have flour fingers. Right. So to speak. Yes. Because you're like effectively creating dough. Yeah. You know, in the process of, of the two, the, the loquacious side of it to the dry side of it. I don't have a good word Lo- for dry. Loquacious? Is that liquid? <laughs> Liquacious? I don't know. It Loquacious. could be. I feel like that's a word to describe like how you speak. Loquacious? Loquacious. Are you saying loquacious or liquacious? Loquacious. Hold on. Is liquacious a word? I don't think so. You know, it probably isn't. (laughs) Hold on. You keep talking about something interesting so I can Google. Okay. Will do. Sadly, the gator tail place has gone out of business. But I recently learned it was replaced by a barbecue place, which was exciting. I was like, man, I like me some barbecue. Anyway, Ben, did you find out anything about loquacious? Tending to loquacious. Loquacious. Uh, Loquacious. The way you say it. Yeah. (laughs) Tending to talk a great deal talkative. Oh, yeah. See, so I was was pretty close. Man. So every single time that somebody described another person as loquacious. (laughs) You were like, I was sitting sitting there thinking like, because they just fell into the water with carp. (laughs) What? (laughs) Very specific. (laughs) That's carpaceous. Carpaceous. Oh, Oh, man. Carpe the diem, you know, seized the the carp. carp. That girl sure did. (laughs) She she did. She seized the carp. Or was seized by the carp. Who knows? Oh, man. They have very, like, suctiony faces. (laughs) It just... Everything about it does not seem pleasant. This poor girl. But this is... It never occurred to me to use this platform that we have to try to find them. Yeah. And now it's possible that I can. Someone out there is like, my wife has told me this story. Yeah. You know, and it's like, (laughs) yes! Like, no way! Hey, how could it be? There it is. Well, oh, maybe it's man. out there. Maybe it's out there. Okay. Well, so we talked a little bit about food just now. Yeah. We'll we'll, we'll take a, a, a kind of transition segue. Segue. Yeah, there we go. Over to place settings. In our oh, last episode, okay. we talked a fair bit about how you and I, for the life of us, had no idea which side of the plate you were supposed to place, like fork, knife, spoon, yeah. napkin. Right. And it turns out, I think we both said fork on the right. I, I think we got it right. <clears throat> I don't I don't think I got it right. I think I think I got it right. I don't know. Okay, well, <laughs> leave it to you. Someone will have to correct us now on our correction here. I know. The the thing that I was told that I do think I can like take to heart yeah. is that fork and left have four letters. Right. And knife and right have five letters. Right. As a spoon. As a spoon. Yeah. And what you're supposed to do is mix them up. No, I'm kidding. That's not what you're (laughs) supposed to do. But that is the way that you remember it. That is the way you remember it. The other thing I saw that was helpful, it's only helpful, I suppose, if you're right-handed, but is that the knife goes on the right because it's this, it's it's your sword hand. And oh, knife, that's so much better. Knives are just like mini swords. Knives are like mini swords. Yeah, right? It needs to be made clear that that's exactly what they're like. Exactly. So if you're right-handed, you can remember that. If I could, if I could <coughs> CTRLF replace knife in my brain with mini sword. Yeah. Then I would do that. Right. Could you like pass me that steak mini sword? <laughs> that steak mini sword. Yeah. You know, it's serrated. <laughs> this, yeah. Uh, could you give me the serrated mini sword, please? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I need a butter mini sword. I want I want my brain to work in such a ones and zero kind of binary way that I could just do that. I yeah. could just change. You could just like, yeah, control F replace. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. And then and then that would just be that. So there you go. anyway, now that we have that figured out. Also, though, here, you placed something. So the idea of place settings, I think, goes into I, what is perceived to be a pool of information referred to as just like general knowledge. On the Reddit for popcorn culture, someone was posting their confusion that we could possibly not know how place settings worked because they considered it such general knowledge. Like, I've just known this since I was five. Is this not just something everybody knows? But this is like the idea of general knowledge is always tricky because you always feel like your knowledge 
is very general. You know, like, or the things you know, everyone must know. Yes. Which is why it's so weird not everyone's thinking like me. Right, right. Yeah. So this is, and this is weird though, because we write our videos here at Super Carlin Brothers, which are usually theory videos. Yeah. Meaning that like throughout the course of the video, as you're watching it, like we're slowly like revealing more information, more information, more information until we yeah. like reveal like the aha moment or whatever, the like, whoa, mind blown, whatever. And there, it's always this strange issue when you've just spent so many hours of your life, like reviewing all of this information. Right. You really start to separate from like, is, is any of this like, I, all I'm saying is things that everyone knows, like, because you've just spent so much yes. time next to all the information yeah. that I feel like frequently it, it it's hard to watch back your own video and be, and be like, wow, we're smart. But <laughs> I was on vacation a couple of weeks ago and you recorded a video where I, I wasn't involved with either the writing or yeah, the shooting, the shooting, the editing, or yeah. So all all I did was I came back and you had like this finished product and I got to like watch a Super Carlin Brothers video. Yeah, just, cold. Just cold. Yeah, like as as like a complete, you know, outsider on right. it, you know? And it was so cool. Oh. I was like, it was yes. your video about Black Widow, Natasha, yeah. which I believe came out Tuesday of the week that this episode comes out, suggesting that she's still alive after the events of Endgame. And it was so much fun to get to watch oh, one good. of our own videos where I wasn't so like ankle deep not even ankle deep, neck deep. Right. In the information. Right. That I, that I just got to enjoy it. Yeah, it, it is. It's such a weird learning curve because at the beginning of every video for like a theory, often when you're like theory crafting, you need your, your you know, by definition, sort of deep diving and zeroing in on very specific things. And like, like see, they said this one thing and it was very tiny. But if you apply that to this, whoa, what does it mean? What right. does it mean? So yeah. you typically need to like, you don't want to like lose anyone's train of thought. So you got to make sure you lay the appropriate appropriate amount of like context ahead of time. Right. But it's hard to know how much context do you need to provide? Like what is what is considered yeah, this, everyone in Harry Potter knows these things. What right. do I need to like, re, I don't need a recap. So, so you'll recall Voldemort tried to kill Harry when he was a baby. It's like, you probably don't need to say that. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, it's like, we we know, yeah. you know, that's that's sort of like the main mystery of the entire series. Right, exactly. Um, but like, you know, maybe like recapping the unforgivable curses. It's like, you know, we spend so much time talking right. about them that it's like, of course, you know, all three. Yeah. And but it may be the case that not everybody watching People could love Harry Potter, but it's been a while since they've read the books. And it's yeah. like, what, what are all three? Maybe they only saw the movies. And it's like, yeah, everyone knows Zavada Kedavra because that's that's the big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, or or maybe it's like, yeah, I know th that means killing. This means torture. This means control. Right. But there might be like little nuances. You'd be like, okay, you, you know the gist of it, but let me... I, well, I need you to know this specific detail because it's going to come into play later and it's going to sound like I'm just explaining it right now, but later you'll see, oh. Oh, it was important uh -huh, yeah, after was, all. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, but anyway. I, I do think that's what's hard is that you don't have the ability to have fresh eyes on it as you're yeah. writing it while also having the knowledge you need to have in order to write it, which basically for me typically leads to me be like second guessing the product the whole way through. Well, I think, and certainly the longer you do it, the easier it gets. Like with Harry Potter, I feel like I feel pretty comfortable with what the considered the consensus general knowledge is because we've made so many Harry Potter videos. Right. But like we just started making Avatar Avatar the Last Airbender content. We did. And that was like I went to write that first script and it was like I have no idea how much I need to explain ahead of time to people. Right. Like like if I'm just explaining stuff are people going to be like, "Yeah, okay, you don't have to say that." Or is it going to be helpful? Like, it was so weird. And I found myself, like, second-guessing everything. And it took me forever to write the very first one. And the next one, too. Because it's like, I, you know, this is a show that hasn't been on regular TV since you know, 2010 or something. Right, right. And it's just been on Netflix and a lot of people remember it, but maybe not everyone's, I don't know. Well, and that, yeah. So I, I remember going through that exact phenomenon when we like started the Super Carlin Brothers channel because like we sort of took a hard transition from doing like vlogs, you know, just you and I talking to mm -hmm. the camera about like an everyday topic to really narrowing in on doing these like deep dive fandom theory videos. Right. And right out of the gate, like in order order to make these you kind of needed to to like give yourself enough 
credit to believe that anybody would be even remotely interested in whatever you had to say about it. Right. And it, it is easier now that we've made hundreds of videos right. about these topics to mm. where it's like, I feel reasonably confident that, that not that I definitely know the most about it, but mm. that the, the baseline viewer, I think like is probably like if I'm at 60% knowledge, they may be at 50, meaning that like th that difference there provides enough interesting right. like, viewpoint. Yeah. Versus like somebody who might be like a, an animation analyst or like a, you know, professional storyteller and author yeah. that can like pick up on like much more of the subtlety of the symbolism and metaphors and similes and hyperbole. I'm, I'm just spouting words that yeah. I learned Is in ninth poetry grade. vocabulary words? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Look at me. I, acrostic? That was a thing. What is an acrostic? That's like when you write like your name or something down the side and you have like a word for each letter of the name. Oh. So it'd be like a word that starts with B and then E and then N and then J. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. That's an acrostic. So berries, energize, never mind, jam. <laughs> That's me That's doing the, an acrostic on my name. <laughs> berries <laughs> and <Energize>. jam. <laughs> Hey, it's all it's sorry it, like, it makes sense okay berries energize never mind jam jam actually <laughs> the first means letters. immediate nausea <laughs> someone someone please just type that up and post it somewhere that, that, i feel like that could be like uh if you made it like super <clears throat> pastelly like with like little animal figurines and stuff it's totally something that you could like hang in like a nursery yeah and it would be like somebody like actually went through and read the words and be like what is this <laughs> Like, make it look much cuter than the words would actually... <laughs> yeah, right. You have to make the words, like, really frilly, so it's, like, kind of hard to read. You can spell out Benjamin, but if you like, like, wait a minute, wait, wait. Berries energized, never mind. Jam, Jam actually. actually. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Nausea. <Huh? laughs> well, that's not where I expected that, that to go. Good. Actually, also now, I need everybody to send me emails of acrostics of your name to Popcorn Culture pod at gmail.com. No, man, I want, I want acrostics of our names. I feel, I feel like this is like a great opportunity for like some sort of poetry contest. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Even better. Even better. Acrostics now, of our names. Of our names. No. Benjamin and Jonathan, not J. That'd be... <laughs> <laughs> the letter J. The letter it's J. just jam. <laughs> <laughs> jam. <laughs> End of poem. What else? What One else could, poems. Here we could go. J stand for other than jam? Um... <laughs> Yeah, no, okay. Yeah, you guys send those in. J Jonathan's name is spelled J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N. There is no uh, first H. It's not like John the name. It's like John J the name. J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N. Yes, yes. Jonathan. J Jonathan, yeah. yeah. There you go. A-K-A J. Jam. <laughs> <laughs> um, A-K-A Jazzy J. A-K-A Jazzy Jam. <laughs> Sorry, we're, I keep getting the there. Jazzy J Jam Hour. <laughs> yes! Yeah, it's all oh, going it, back. It, it's, it's all working. Yeah, so you guys submit those and we will read some of our favorites uh, in a future <laughs> episode. Again, you can send those to popcornculturepod at gmail.com. Um, I, I prefer for them to be just, just as ridiculous as possible. Hey, should we... I feel like... I don't know what the prize will be, but I feel like we should have a prize for the, the Jonathan winner and the Benjamin winner. Oh, yeah, okay. Simply to be determined by us. Simply to be determined. Yep. There must be some type of popcorn-themed... Prize. We prize. can offer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll find something. We'll find something. We'll think okay. of something. Yeah. We're not smart enough to do it on the fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we are smart enough to do it before a future episode. All right. Well, let, let the games begin. The first ever popcorn culture poetry <laughs> contest is underway. Is underway. Woo! Wow, wow. Wow. Isn't it funny that both of our names have eight letters? It is. I've always thought that was weird. Literally since I was a kid, it was like, man, eight letters is kind of a lot of letters for a name. Kind of feels like when they got to Tyler, mom and I got kind of lazy. You know? It does a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, no, I don't think that's, that's too many. Yeah. Like, oh God, it's a lot of syllables. It is. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. I genuinely, though, as a kid, I thought that was rather unusual. Well, there you go. We both have eight letters in our name. Both have eight letters. Okay. So <laughs> anyway, we, we were originally talking as we sort of ventured into our uh, How Theories Work Super Carlin Brothers edition about general knowledge. Yeah. I believe that you have a quiz okay. of, of general knowledge questions. Am I understanding this correctly? So, so yes, yeah, so I was curious about the idea of general knowledge and it actually reminded me of a different podcast that I listen to quite frequently or, well, they haven't uploaded in like, I don't know. 
I don't know, half a year now, sadly. I discovered this quiz via another podcast known as Hello Internet, which is hosted by uh, CGP Grey and uh, Brady Heron from Numberphile. Yes. Yes. But the quiz itself was created by some researcher who was trying to determine what is general knowledge in the public. And they created this quiz in the 80s, and it was just sort of like general pop culture. It was across a lot of different categories. Maybe, yeah, maybe some of it's pop culture, maybe some of it's like geographies. I, I don't know where it's going to go. Okay. The whole the whole quiz is like 300 questions, so we're not going to do the whole thing. We'll just do like 295. <gasps> but it, it, yeah, maybe we'll only do like the first 295 or something. Perfect, yeah. 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 But they go in order of easiest to most difficult. So maybe we'll try and like jump around. Do some tears. Okay. Yeah, but it has been updated from 1980 to 2012 because obviously general knowledge has changed Expanded. Yeah. since then. Yeah. Um. Okay. Like an example they gave was that like in the 1980s, you would probably know who the sidekick of the Lone Ranger was because the Lone Ranger was on TV. Okay. But in 2012, you might not know that because not really as relevant anymore. Tonto? That is correct, actually. Oh, yes. yay! Okay, that I do not think that that would, I had to like really second guess myself. I would not say that that was that was base knowledge. I was rummaging in my desk drawers in my mm, brain. Nice. Okay, so so I wait. have the list of questions in front of me here. Okay, hit me with it. All right, this is going to be considered the easiest question on the whole quiz. Oh boy, Ready? this feels question like one. My, my, I'm actually like kind of nervous. Like, what if I don't know? You're. Gonna, I'm quite certain you don't know this. Uh, what is the name of the horse-like animal with black and white stripes? A zebra. Very good. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, honestly, I think my upper lip is sweating right now. <laughs> like, you can't see it because I have a mustache, but... Okay, if you're playing along it, if you... Uh, well, I don't know how many of these we should do, but I'll, I'll read through maybe the first, like, ten, and then I'll start jumping around. So if you're playing along at home, just know that unless you say it out loud before I say the answer, it does not count. Like, you can't be like, I think it's this, and then be like, oh, yeah, I, I did know that. I did. Okay, so you need to know... It, it can't be... Okay, I love that. That's yeah, a yeah. good point. If you're sitting there listening with someone, even if you're just listening by yourself, you need to say the answer out loud. Yes. Or it doesn't count. You need to make your guess known. None of this. Oh, right. No, I knew that. Don't worry. That counts. I love I love the idea of like somebody sitting on the subway and just being like, zebra. <laughs> <laughs> and people around them being like, what? Where? <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully most people are on the subway listening to this, if that's the case. All right. Are you ready? Question yes. two. What is the name of the long sleep some animals go through during the entire winter? Is that really the second question? Yep. Hibernation. Correct. All right. Question three. What is the name of the rubber object that is hit back and forth by hockey players? A puck? Correct. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, feeling good? I, I actually, I'm feeling really good so far. Okay. I'm very surprised at what these are. I'm surprised two of them, two out of three were animal related. Well, okay, <laughs> maybe that, maybe animals are just common knowledge across all generations. I, w I wonder if it's because of the number <laughs> of books, like how many books that Luke is being exposed to right now feature animals? Oh, so many. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And maybe it's because, maybe if we just had like stock portfolios in our like early coloring books, right. it would be like, yeah, I know what a blue chip stock is. Come at me. Yeah. I don't know what a blue chip stock is, but I know that it is a thing. Yeah. Bulls and bears, right? Yes. Dow, Dow, the NASDAQ. All of those. Yeah. I know those words. Okay. Question four. What is the name of the remains of plants and animals that are found in stone? Fossils? Correct. Oh, wow. You got it. Wow. <laughs> I'm sure you'll, I'm, I feel quite certain you know this one. Which precious gem is red? A ruby. Correct. Huh. You know, when I was a kid, I, I've talked about this before. I loved like gems. Oh, who doesn't? Shiny yeah. things. You love gold. treasure. Treasure. Yeah. Yes. We have talked about it because I want to be a treasure hunter. Oh man. Could there be a better profession? Hold up. Have I talked about magnet fishing? Nope. Just jumping into pools of carp fishing. <laughs> That's not fishing, Jay. That's falling into a pool of carp. Let's be real. If you're out there, contact us. No, magnet fishing is this like viral thing that's happening right now where people literally have these like heavy duty magnets and they're like fishing off of like the edges of like bridges or just like shoreline somewhere. Oh, oh, oh. And they're like literally reeling in metal objects that have like sunk to the bottom of oh, like water. It's like modern. It's like metal detecting, but fishing. It's like metal detecting, but fishing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's it's. It's, I think there's a huge trope involved with it. Like uh, I've seen on the TikTok a fair bit that there are people who are like, and people thought magnet fishing was ridiculous. <clears throat> and you watch like a full 55 seconds of this guy, like pulling something in and then he walks over and holds it up and it's like a nail oh, and, you're, no. and you're like, 
I swear, I just watched... It's a minute of my life. I'm never going to get back. This guy Uh-oh. totally got me. At the same rate, though, I'm like, I need a magnet <laughs> immediately. You need to go magnet fishing. Hold on. Is gold magnetic? Because if not, what is even the point? Yeah, what are you actually hoping to reel in? I feel like it wouldn't be magnetic because it would seem like um, hunting for gold would be easier Yeah, you wouldn't have was. to like pan for gold. You could just like magnet hold a magnet over the dirt and just collect it, right? Gold in its bulk form, like the metal in a wedding ring, is not considered a magnetic material. Technically, it's classified as diamagnetic, meaning that it can be repelled by a magnetic field but cannot form a permanent magnet. Oh, interesting. It is very interesting. Okay. Anyway, is that part of the general knowledge questions? Uh, what, magnet fishing? No, not magnet fishing, but it, whether or not gold is magnetic. Oh, no, I don't okay. think so. I, it would not surprise me if there were some, like, periodic table questions on here at oh, some point. Oh, boy. Okay. Probably not in the first ten. All right, give me give me another one. Okay, what is the name of the severe headache that returns periodically and is often accompanied by nausea? A migraine? Correct. Nice. I get migraines sometimes. Ugh, they are they, the worst. They are the worst. Oh, thank you for confirming that. What is the last name of the author who wrote Romeo and Juliet? Shakespeare? I cannot believe that more people would know what migraines are than who wrote Mo- Romeo and Juliet. It does. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I would agree with that. Okay. So that's uh, question seven. We're going to at least do the first 10 and then we'll start jumping down to the harder ones. Okay. Yeah. So I'm supposed to get these right. I, I mean, I guess. <laughs> what is the... N- these are things that would be considered extreme general knowledge. Okay. Of course, everyone knows. These are all so far... Well, even... Okay. Well, let me... Let me... It, the way it, I'm having to like scroll side to side to see. But so far, let me uh, the top 10, at least 80% of people have gotten right. All the way down to the top 11, 80% of people got right on the test. Okay. So already though, people would be missing some. Yeah. Okay. I was going <clears> to <throat> say 80% feels much more reasonable to me than, than the, I, I was thinking that this was going to be like 99% of people. So. Well, the only, only zebra has been even in the nineties. Wow. Hibernation was at 89 and it drops pretty quickly. You get down into the 50s by question 34. Okay. Well, after the top 10, let's immediately go to 34. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Where are we next then? Question eight. What is the name of a dried grape? A raisin. Yes. Uh, Question nine. What is the name of the comic strip character who eats spinach to increase his strength? Popeye? Yes. And number 10. What animal runs the fastest? A cheetah. Yes. Although, that, is that confirmed? Are I, cheetahs the fastest? Uh, this That feels like one where it's like, well, actually. It does feel like, well, actually. I yeah. agree with that. Like, yeah. I, And I don't know whether or not something is actually faster than the cheetah, but... I'm, I'm looking it up. That um, is the answer on this quiz anyway. Yes. And I feel like under the childhood, you know, books yeah. mecha- method, right. a cheetah would be known for being It the is fastest. certainly the generally accepted answer as the fastest animal. All right. Let's see here. Is the cheetah the fastest animal? The fastest land animal is the cheetah, there which has go. recorded a speed of between 109.4 kilometers per hour, 68 miles per hour, and 120.7 uh, kilometers per hour, 75 miles Can per hour. Can you imagine driving down the interstate and having a cheetah be level with your car no that is i certainly cannot that is so impressive i mean i don't think they can maintain it for very long but right but even still i mean the fact that you i mean that's a dead antelope i don't i don't know how fast it is but i'm pretty sure that like olympic athletes running the 100 meter dash is like somewhere in the zip code of upper 20 miles per hour sure like you're the fastest human is half the speed, right? If not less than half. Also, it says the peregrine falcon is the fastest bird, the fastest member of the animal kingdom, with a diving speed of 242 miles per hour. Oh my god! Which is like that's like whoo! That is crazy. That is what we like to call in the industry whipping. Whipping. Yeah. Okay. Give me another question. Okay. So you wanted to jump down to 34 now. 34. So this will be under 60 percent of people got this. Okay. This is actually question 33. My bad. What is the name? Name of the island city believed since antiquity to have sunk into the ocean. Atlantis. Correct. All right, we'll keep we'll keep down this line of thought for a second here. Uh, question 34 then. What is the name of the lizard that changes its color to match the surroundings? A chameleon. Yes. Oh, uh, chameleon, you, as I, I like to call it. <laughs> chameleon. There you go. All right, question 35. What is the name of the thick layer of fat on a whale? 
Blubber. Very good, very good. All right, I'm gonna jump down into the uh, under 50%. Okay, let's Maybe do I'll it. jump down, maybe that's how I'll jump down. By, by like percentiles? Yeah, yeah, That seems yeah. like a good way to do it, yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is under, this is the first question under 50% of people got. It is question 45. In what park is Old Faithful located? Yosemite? Incorrect. No, it's not? No. Hold on, hold on. Let's think. <clears throat> what is it? I do know this. It's somewhere in there. Yeah. My brain skull. You definitely know it. What is it? Tell it's me. It's Yellowstone. Yellowstone! Goodness it gracious. It wouldn't even surprise me if you thought you'd said Yellowstone. <laughs> yeah, me either. Me either. I mean, how many national parks do you know of? <laughs> like, yeah, Yosemite, Yellowstone. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we got there. We got there. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, that's, that's your first one. That's which, to be fair, basically a coin flip. That's 49% of people got that one. Okay. 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 So let's Thanks jump. for easing my, let's, my we're pain. Gonna, we're going to jump down to thir under 40%. This is the first one under, under 40% of people got. Okay, okay, pressure's on. Okay. What brand of cigarette was first to have the flip top box? Whoa, really? Ooh. I mean, I would go with Marlboro. Yeah. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, but like, just because they're the biggest cigarette brand. That, that would you know be of? like, who was the first soda manufacturer to have a pop top like can? Right. It would, I would say Coca Cola. Right. And maybe Don't that's know. right. Maybe it's maybe it's RC Cola. Who knows? Who knows? Okay. So we're gonna jump down to below thirty percent now. Below thirty right? percent. Okay. All right. I think based on the answer, I think you'll know it. But I don't know what the question is yet. So less than thirty percent of question people got this question right. What is the last name of the man who proposed the theory of relativity? Theory of relativity. Einstein? Yes. Man, so <clears throat> we're only at question 79 of 300 and already we're under 30%. Do you know that I frequently get Einstein and Edison <clears throat> confused in my head? Oh, uh, they're like, both like important scientists who start with E? Yes, exactly. And yeah. so I feel like whenever I think of Einstein's the one who had like the hair, right? Yeah. And there's like the really famous picture with like his tongue out. Yeah. Okay. I feel like whenever people are talking <clears throat> about Edison, I... That is like what I am picturing as what Thomas Edison uh, Thomas looks like. Also crazy. It's just, just it, it, like they looked the same. They maybe even were brothers with different last names. Maybe, maybe. All right, we're jumping down now to below twenty percent. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is question ninety-four. What is the name of the mountain range in which Mount Everest is located? Let's see. So, what is the name of the mountain range? It's in Nepal, right? Correct. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I know that much. I feel like I know. I'm like I know where mountain ranges are. Like the Andes, I think, are in South America. The Alps are in France slash slash Switzerland. That Swiss Alps. Right. Swiss Alps. That sounds right. Yeah. That sounds like a thing. That sounds right. Um. Yeah. Okay. So what other mountain ranges are there? We have the Appalachian Mountains, of course. The Rocky Mountains. I'm not stalling. Um. Oh my gosh. Is it gonna completely frustrate me when I hear it? Yeah. Oh no. I hate that. It makes it even worse. Himalayans. That's right. Yes. Oh, yes! you got it. <laughs> Whoo! What got you there? Uh, I honestly, I was just turning over papers in my brain desk, and eventually, it was on there. Himalayan sea salt. Okay. You know. <laughs> Welcome to the Himalayas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's from Monsters oh, Inc. That is. That is. Uh, good, good, good Pixar knowledge. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So that was under twenty percent. Now we need under ten percent. <laughs> Okay, okay. I feel like based on this first one, the answer, I think you'll get it. But what is the name of the captain of the Picard in the book Moby Dick? Um, Basically, who's hunting Moby Dick? I've never read Moby Dick. Have you read Moby Dick? I, I have not, but I know the answer to this question. <laughs> oh, crud muffins. <clears throat> uh, I feel like I do. Uh, yeah. I, I know. I know that it is a recognizable name. I do yeah. know that. Um, Captain Ahab. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Captain Ahab. Yes. All right. You got it. Yes. Was, that was 127. And now we're under 10%. So let's maybe we'll jump to under 5%. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Are you? I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Okay. You've been doing. Okay. What is the last name of the scientist who discovered radium? Whoa. The last name of the scientist who discovered radium. Yeah. Wish I even knew what the significance of radium was. <laughs> 
Oh, see, I told you that we could do the element or a periodic table one. It had to get there eventually, didn't it? Yep. I, I don't think I could even venture a guess. Okay, it is Curie, like Madame Curie. Oh. There's actually, I think, a new movie that just came out, I think on Amazon Prime, about her. Interesting. Discovering this. Okay. So fun okay. fact. Yeah, I, 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 I do not think, I would have recognized that name, but I do not think that that is something that I would have ever learned in such a specific right. capacity. Right. You knew she was like a famous female scientist of history, but not what she was famous for. Exactly. Sure. Yep. Okay. Let's see. That was under 5%. Let's go under 4%. Boy. Uh, what is the last name of the commander who lost the battle of the Little Bighorn River? Who lost the battle? Civil War? I think this is um, uh, a few between uh, Native Americans or with Native Americans. Okay. Right? I think. Who is Maybe, it? Now it's Custer is the answer. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. Give me one more. Give me one more. Okay. I feel like I'm reaching. I'm, I'm, my morale's dropping morale drastically. Dropping. I can't have it. Should we go to the very hardest? Oh, there's there's plenty of, there's complete zeros. All right, so, oh man. Should we go to the very bottom of the go list? Go to the very bottom of the list. The very. If this is interesting that, that they become general knowledge questions and so many of them, less than 10% of people would know. Right. Look, I, don't, I want to know what qualifies something to become general knowledge in such a way that, like, does that mean that it is information that could be readily available without being, like, specifically an expert within a certain field? I think, yes, it seems like just through your general existence as a human on earth, you would have come across this. Like through osmosis, you could have just observed it. Right, like you, you, I guess it's, yeah, it's suggesting this is, I mean, this is probably American culture too. Sure. Is that like, as a, as someone who grew up in America, you probably came into contact with this information, whether you were intended to or not. Okay, okay. Is what I would say. So, okay, the very hardest question, although many of them have 0%, but this is the very last question anyway, is what is the highest mountain in South America? What is the highest mountain? mountain in South America. Let's see. What is the one that everybody always... Is it a climbable mountain? Oh, I don't know. I can't even... I'm not even sure I can pronounce it. Wow. You can't pronounce it. Well, I have a guess, but... I was going to say the... Uh, no, I think the Matterhorn is in Alaska. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's another... Well, gonna... <laughs> mountain knowledge. If you, Let me tell you, if you were like somebody who goes to trivia nights, a quick way... Quick things, I think, would be a good study for you if you want to increase your... Uh, your score at your local bars trivia night. You're gonna to want to study uh, rivers, mountains, uh, and skyscrapers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. By the way, the Matterhorn is actually a mountain of Europe. Oh, <laughs> not in Alaska. I think Alaska also has a very famous mountain that people climb, like like Everest. <clears throat> okay. Okay. What is this one called? This is called the uh, Aconcagua. Aconcagua. Let me see. Yeah. Look at it right there at the bottom. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I Aconga Aconagua. Aconagua. There Aconagua. There you go. Yeah. That That's... is the highest mountain in South America. Okay. Well, guys, I want to know how <laughs> you were doing alongside me there. Were those all very obvious? Was it painful to hear me not know things that should have been obvious? Th that's the thing about general knowledge. That's that's always the, the double-edged sort of general knowledge stuff is that like when you know it, you're just like, I can't believe you wouldn't know this. Right. But as soon as you're on the other side of it, it's like, no, I'm the one. No, I'm the one. So this is, this is something that happens to me though. I have a small handful <gasps> of friends where when Whenever I hang out with them, I always leave the interaction being like, I'm going to come prepared next time. I'm going to like next time I'm, I'm going to know all of these things before we next interact. And it's like, literally, I'm talking about wanting to know information about things that you could never possibly even know to research. Yeah. And I'm always just blown away. I'm like, why do you know this? How do you know this? When did you learn? Right. Like, I think it, it will drive me crazy at times where it's like, um, oh my gosh, this actually just happened this past weekend. Okay, so we've been watching this show on Netflix with Zac Efron. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it called? I don't know, but I know the one you're talking about. Hold on, I'm going to figure it out because I, I can't talk about it without actually specifically throwing to the... Uh, to the show. To the show. It is called Down to Earth with Zac Efron. He has this entire episode where he's talking about water. And at the beginning of the episode, he actually sits down with like a water sommelier who like w explains the difference between different kinds of water. Interesting. And like the types of water quality and like why and how drinking, like, and, and me and you have talked about this before because at our house growing up, we had distilled water everywhere for our aquariums because right. it's just that much more pure. Um, And I, I think I even remember like 
telling you guys don't drink distilled water because it's so stripped down of nutrients that it will actually take nutrients from you as it goes through your your body right and i have it is like a it could be like one of those old wives tales that people told me right through the being in the aquarium trade and maybe it's like medically it's like that's not how your body works and it doesn't that's that's <laughs> it's just water <laughs> that's not a real thing it's just, it, it just doesn't benefit you as much as it could or something which i'd be perfectly fine with that being the case but so the explanation basically is just going into sort of the differences between tap water and how like specifically in america i think we use much more like chemical filtration in order to purify our water so things more like chlorine in order to have clean drinking water versus okay. like uh, natural filtering methods or, you know, having more pure water sources or something. Uh, and the water sommelier <laughs> basically explains that like you can have different textures and bodies of water based on the, the TDS oh, of the water, which wow. is the, the total dissolved solids. Um, and that's sort of like what can give certain waters their flavor. And It's how- so interesting that you would even describe water as, as having flavor because to me the point of water is that it is flavorless. That's like, yeah, it's like this is your base. I did look it up by the way and just googling should you drink distilled water and it says distilled water is safe to drink but you'll fi- probably find it flat or bland which i'm like so water so water <laughs> yeah you're not describing anything <laughs> yeah. different from all of my experiences with this substance yeah <clears throat> okay okay that's, yep. that's very interesting but yeah i think they also go on to say that like with uh bottled water frequently you are buying like purified water which is actually like just not as good for you as just like natural spring water or water that actually has all of those minerals in it because you can actually i, I suppose the argument <laughs> is that you can gain some kind of you know uh additional nutrients from your water which is never something I ever even would have considered. No, me like, neither. I, I tend to think of water as just like your your baseline. You need it to survive. Right. And that's it. Yeah. Um, I, just get, I get water. I will... I will say that if I'm just like at my house and I'm like, I need a glass of water, I will go to like the fridge to fill it up rather than the sink. Okay. Okay. Because that goes through like a filter, a membrane. Yes. But even when I do that, I'm like, like, what's the difference, Jonathan? Does it really make a difference? And I'm like, no. Fridge. Fridge. (laughs) It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but I still, there's like that 1% of me that's like, oh man, this has a filter on it. I changed the filter recently. Uh." Right. Yeah. Well, I do the dishes in the sink. The water out of this faucet probably is dirty. It's like, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. It's not like the, the food particles travel up your faucet. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, don't drink water from your drain, for sure. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. That would be terrible. Yeah. But, okay, so the reason I brought this up, though, is that we were hanging out with our friend Coral over the weekend, and we were telling her about how we watched the show. And Coral is, like, known for being, like, unexpectedly just, like, knowledgeable about things that mm. we just discovered. So this is something where I'm sure I am not the only one who has like a new appreciation for water because of Zac Efron's show on Netflix. Way to go, Zac. But, which by the way, I have to tell you, Zac Efron is quickly becoming one of like the celebrities that I would straight up fangirl to meet. Ah, awesome. Yeah, it's like, man, you are such a great person, it seems like. (laughs) (laughs) Also, the way you wear a beanie is awesome. I want to be just like you. No, but where am I going with this? Oh, so we're talking to Coral about this water thing and explaining it to her and she like almost cuts us off and like has not watched the show because we're telling her about it and this like new infatuation we have with water and she just immediately knows all of this information. I'm like, how? How and when? Did you, you sifted through all this information so well and you, you're you like as knowledgeable as we are and we just watched the episode. Right. And it's like, when did you take the time or think to search about water? Uh, about all the different kinds of waters. And yet you have. Yeah. Ugh. Well, I mean, I can see how someone would like be curious about this exact t- topic if you're like buying bottled water at the store and you're like, if your opinion is like, all water is just water, right? Like what is the deal why are there 20 brands right 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 right. yes and i think that i would say that the show would shed light on the fact that any bottled water you're getting is literally bottled tap water for the most part that like you're you're buying effectively convenience more than anything else like the ability for it to be portable and then easily i guess disposable to you not disposable to the planet Uh (laughs) so i don't know i thought it was very interesting and it fills in very nicely with our general knowledge discussion it does it does well i think yeah 
if you're trying to hunt down where people source this information from, I would say you should probably go to like a trivia night. Um, and when, I, cause inevitably someone would just like know something so thoroughly that you don't. And it will just be like, man, that that's probably a good way to be like, where did you learn that? Where did you learn that? Yeah. Oh, but there's nothing worse. Sometimes uh, this is the thing for me though. It's I, I've talked about this before. I feel like I can usually tell you why I know the things that I know. Yeah. Like, maybe you could, like, pick something that I've said before. I'm like, why do you know this? And you're like, well, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Because I can go right back to that moment when right I there. learned. When I learned. The, the, there was a moment where I didn't know, then I learned, and then I knew. And right. now we're here. Now we're here. Um, And I hate it when people don't know where they learned things. Like, I don't know. Just sort of, I just picked it up. Huh? I, it's like, no. Unacceptable. 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 It's like, tell me your secrets. You are not telling. You have a method for knowing these things, and I need to know what that method is. Mm. And it's killing me that you are not telling me. <sighs> So if you know something, you need to know why you know it. Yeah. Where are your sources? <laughs> Come on, man. MLA formatted, please. Is MLA formatting still a thing? I'm sure it is. That's, you know, the way most high school papers are written. Okay. That's another thing. Why was that such a big deal? Like, I get it, like, in terms of, like, giving you know, proper credit and stuff like that. But it's, like, it's almost like all of high school papers are operating under the assumption that you are absolutely going on to a career of writing academic papers. It, I think, is not less about being, like, you need to write this particular uh, way because you'll need to be good at writing this way later on and more of, like, standardizing the way students write across just the classes within high school so they're like all the teachers like you're writing the same way for every class and all the teachers can expect papers to be in the same format and style across all generations well i can tell you that i never properly understood it well in I, high school I, at all i will agree i also was just like i don't like what like mla stuff like it's just writing is writing what do you mean right it never nothing ever clicked for me until i went to college and had to do uh, media writing and had to learn ap style okay and that was fascinating in like the ways it was different and it was like because in AP style, that's like Associated Press. Right. Um, you, like all of your words choices should be like very neutral. Got it. And so, or, you know, have to be like, I guess, politically correct or whatever. And so like our professor would come in and he would like tell you a story out loud. And, you know, you don't have to pick that up like a voice recorder. So you can go back and listen to it later. Like a, like a real news person. Oh. Yeah. But um, then you'd have to go through and he would like plant all sorts of like wrong or like things that were phrased poorly or, you know, he'd be like, this person, you know, he wouldn't tell you their age or something. He'd be like, he'd tell you the date of the the event that was happening. Then he'd tell you like the year they were born or something. And you'd have to like make sure you did the math right based on the month it presently was versus when they were born. And, you know, oh, wow. stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Make sure you listed it out correctly. Like this, like, you know, last name, comma, 37, comma, you know, it's like just making sure you like, there's like appropriate ways you write for newsprint, I guess. Right. Right, right, right. So on some level, conceivably, even though many different people could be writing the same story, it should be written reasonably similarly to one another when it comes to the finished product. The the further up the story, the more similar it should be. Okay. Like the first sentence should almost all like a single sentence should answer the questions who, what, where, when, and why. Wow. Um, all in like one sentence, which is, which, you know, the who would be like Carlin. 32 resident of Roanoke was, you know, found dead at the scene of the crime, you know. What? <laughs> right. No. I know, terrible story. But that would be Bean like bag the... accident or <laughs> <laughs> fell into a pile of carp. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's, That's it. it. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of The Pop. As always, we need to know all of your information um, about your general knowledge and how you know it. Your acrostic submissions for an unknown oh, prize. Where are people going to submit the acrostic? You can say. submit the acrostics to popcornculturepod at gmail.com. Hmm, I also think the Reddit would be a good spot so other people can see the other people's. You know what? Yeah. Let's do both. Okay. Let's, we'll do both. We'll all do right. both. And we will pick a winner uh, for both Jonathan, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N, yep. and Benjamin, B-E-N-J-A-M-I-N. Prize TBD. Prize TBD. Uh, what was mine? Can we remember it? Berries <laughs> Energized. <laughs> Never mind. J-O. Actually. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, M I N, what was it? Her ended in nausea. <laughs> yeah, ended in nausea. Well, we remembered most of it, so props, <laughs> to, props to us. Well done. A Selfs. 
a special thank you to these new patrons who support us over on our Patreon page. We have Lady Ace, Lindsay Fletcher, Zachary Johnson, Erica Blankenship, Charlie Zrope. I, I hope I have that correct. Uh, Madison Smith, Sophia Deyakia. I looked that one up. Uh, and Athena. Oh, I should look this one wow. up. Wow. Proyos. So close. Proyos. P R O I O S. I actually had somebody, and I do need to give this person a shout out. Their name is. Austin DeLouch nailed it because Austin actually wrote us in and said that he wanted to start uh, the trend of letting us know how they pronounce their last names. Oh, so if that is something I can't promise, I'll always get it right. But I do. I do desperately want to try because I don't want Mm. uh, to get anybody's name wrong, especially for your very generous support over on Patreon. Uh, With that support, you also get an additional uh, 10 to 15 minutes weekly of what we call after the final pop, which is an additional little episode that Jay and I do uh, for those who support us on Patreon. Patreon. But otherwise, guys, until next week, and Jay, I got a message from somebody saying that your pop pops were seeming a little sad lately and they were worried about you. No. So until next week, pop pop! <laughs> <laughs>